I don't think it's unique. I don't think one thing to exit this life is unique to my experience. The reason when he debated everyone wasn't just like to end a problem. It, the word was a peace. Every party connected to him. Ugh. When friends try to talk you out of it, you have a better reason. And I feel like that is what depression is. Because people cannot put a, 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 a finger to depression. How do you feel when you're depressed? You cannot explain it, right? I was uh, at that point of time where I wanted to close down that thing because I was very tired of doing it. I think I was having this chat with you. I'm like, views are going down. I think we've reached our max potential. Yeah, like our, our send off season already. And I'm going to end it. This interview is not going, sorry, this conversation is not going the way I, I planned it to be. But it's so beautiful. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is. So, but I like what we are talking about, right, which in my notes, I wanted to talk about crazy and spirituality. Because oh. I feel like that is something that you push a lot on your socials about spirituality and astrology. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I'm a fan, I'm a fan. Like you, you are the one who taught me a lot of astrology and spirituality. Hmm. And I feel like- They're not the same thing lah. They're two different things they're two on different the same things. parallels. Yes. Different tensions. Yes. And I use <laughs> these two things for, for different, different, uh, but you're Different not experiences. wrong. Uh, yeah. I, I do. But I lean toward more on the spirituality side of things where you taught me or rather you put me on this journey. Mm. And I meditate. I, I, I do a lot of spiritual things except praying. But again, I find God in my it's own. It's your journey. Yes. It's your journey. Nobody online on the comment section is allowed to tell you what your journey is. They can comment. Mm. You can choose to be affected or not. That's their right to comment. It's free speech. Yeah. But it's not their truth. Mm. Your journey is your truth. What I wanted to ask you is, spirituality is something that people need to experience first to find. And what I mean by that is, some people will need to hit rock bottom and then they find spirituality. Mm. Was you finding spiritual spirituality based on an experience? It's hard because at a very young age, I already had a very vivid experience with the idea of God, who I call Allah. Uh, but yes, a rock bottom experience. Uh, I said this in an interview on another channel, but I guess I'll just repeat it here. Um, my first experience with God was 11-year-old Hirzi. So we had just moved house from one block to another block. Mm. <laughs> uh, and what happens is when you move house, you will have kanduri, dua selamat like basically, right? Dua selamat is like a mass prayer where all your family and relatives come and, and, and wish blessings and bliss for you. And part of it is to, to read um, the Yasin, uh, of which I'm not quick at reading Yasin, especially at 11. Until today, I would still like read each Arabic letters very slow. But I remember at the start of the prayer, my uncle had said, we're going to do this. He, he, he basically gave a presentation point, uh, point form, like what's going to happen for this uh, prayer. And he says, we're going to do this, we're going to read that, we're going to read this, we're going to read that. I, I appreciated it because at the end, he says, and towards the end, we can ask for a dua, anything we want. And I remember hearing that. I said, hmm. I remember him saying this specifically though. And if you read with all your sincerity, you can ask for a dua. And if it's truly sincere, Allah will grant it. Mm. So this is 11-year-old Hirzi, okay? Very, very antagonizing. He was like, I want God to prove himself to me. I will read very sincerely this prayer session, okay? I will very, very sincerely read it. Or what can I ask? I was thinking, my PlayStation. Really? <laughs> really? Really? And I was like, what else can I ask? I was thinking of all the things to ask, but what would prove a maker? Mm. I closed my eyes, I thought hard, I said, I want a younger sibling. I'm 11. Okay. It's way past the timeline. Mm -hmm. It would truly surprise me. So I took the Yasin that had Rumi. Rumi is the alphabetized version of the Arabic letters. So I read. <laughs> you know, I was just keeping up with the, the rest of my relatives. But I was reading the alphabet actually. <laughs> Very, very, very sincerely. And then, true enough, towards the end, he called for, you know, whatever do you want. I closed my eyes and I said, I would like to have a younger sibling. 
And the prayer ate nothing. Completely forgot about this whole thing even happened. A month later, mom and dad comes home from work and says, Sons, I need to sit you down. I'm like, what do you mean? I'm pregnant. I goosebumps. I'm having goosebumps now. I remember just sitting down, back into my bed. And I just said, Okay, you're real. He's real. You're yeah. Real. And I think that's why I love my sister dearly. Even though like, my connection with her now is, is not, you know, like, very, very close. Mm. But I love her dearly because I completely feel responsible uh, for this moment. We were so close also when we were younger. Like, we were so, so tight. Uh, especially when she was a baby in toddler. And then you became a teenager. And me and my struggles, I had to experience my own life. And that's another topic altogether. But that was my first experience with God. As young as 11. Which is why I say some people practice your faith and some people get to experience it. But to answer your question, was it from hitting rock bottom? And the answer is yes. I don't think it's unique. I don't think one thing to exit this life is unique to my experience. And I'm sure it's as painful for people as well. But I had an episode of it and it was... I wouldn't say an episode because like, you know, depression comes in waves. But there was a period in my life where it was... I remember that version of Shirazi was so determined. And he had planned this really intricate plan mm. on how to actually go about doing it. And but, once again, God showed up. Uh, wait, yeah. Intricate plan to end your life. To exit, yes. I, I use the word exit because it's kind of... Okay. Uh, but... Yeah, to, to, to exit it. Mm. It was, and, and people don't know. People don't know what hate can do. I say this now, but I'm also guilty of it in, in, in a lot of facades of my life. But at this age, now on hindsight, like 15 years from all this, mm. now that I've learned this version of me, what 2016 Hughes Day was, okay, let's go through 2016 Hughes Day. Uh, he had just finished the Ping Dot Saga volume of hate mm. had to deal with it on a very personal level as well the 2012 saga coupled with all these other struggles that was accumulating in my life I was determined every single time I sat down with a friend to talk about it so determined that it was like a debate they are sure to lose anything they try to counter with me about why I'm not making sense of this decision I'm not, I'm not thinking straight. I can sensibly, like it's a debate, mm. bring their points down. And that exiting my life is the best kind resolution to 2016 Hughesy then. I think you just uh, explained depression in a different way. I never heard of this. You saying that when friends try to talk you out of it, you have a better reason and I feel like that is what depression is. Because people cannot put uh, 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 your finger to depression. How do you feel when you're depressed? Yeah. You cannot explain it, right? I guess. Yeah. But I, I feel like that's a great explanation of <laughs> what depression feels like. Because now you think about why death is the greater option. It's, I mean, in, in no sense are we advocating this. Mm. <laughs> but to empathize that 2016 Hughesy, the reason when he debated everyone wasn't just like to end a problem. It, the word was a peace. Every party connected to him. Mm. Ugh. I'm not gonna cry. I'm not gonna cry. <laughs> so that version of him, the metaphor I used was he was holding a ball of fire. Okay? Whoever holds this ball of fire will feel the pain. And this ball of fire is a piece of truth. And he holds it. He feels the pain. And maybe he didn't want to feel that pain anymore. Mm. So let's bury that fire. And that was his logic then. Every single friend that sat down with me, my four female confidants, Muna as well, mm. couldn't just reason with Hughes. And I'm a class A debater. Mm. Okay, so I'm not just coming with you with emotional whims. I'm coming with you with facts, which was scarier that 
exiting life was not just an emotional thing, it was factual for him at that point of time. And so people couldn't talk me out of it. And what is this ball that you're holding made out of? Fire lah, I said it. No, no, I mean, <laughs> I'm sure it, it is made out of a lot of different facts. Yeah, it, it's, it's loaded. It, it, it's heavy and it burns. It burns. It burns so hard. I did not want to hold it anymore. Mm. And I don't want anyone I love to hold it. It hurts. So burying it was the solution. 2016, here is he. Fell at the point of time. 2024, here is he. We'll have a very beautiful understanding of it. But we'll footnote this later. Mm. Let's finish 2016, here is he. Uh, one of the hardest things that I cannot fathom was when you exit life, the problem with this living is the physical body exists. So how you choose to exit this life is your peace, but you burden whoever you leave behind with the condition and state of the physical body you have. And that was something that always helped me back. Two reasons are uh, that I have a sister to be, responsibili- to be responsible for. Mm. Uh, and number one is I cannot bear to know how my loved one deals with the physical condition of how I was. So then, that was why it would have taken a year and a half for me to like come up with this intricate plan. What a dear cousin's, a dear friend's cousin didn't know, we were having a, a, a dinner together, was a story she shared just rang the bell for me. So she shared, she's, she's a travel agent, and she said like how her grandfather had passed away in Japan and they didn't buy insurance and so because they didn't buy insurance to activate the RSAF, it would take mm. tens and thousands of dollars to fly the body back to Singapore. The family didn't have that. So the best solution was because he had a cardiac arrest in Japan to just bury the body there. So until today, they keep visiting Japan to, to visit the grandfather. Mm. And that's when I just went, it's my checklist. Young Hiruzi always wanted to see the world and travel. Do you know? A little footnote, I always travel not because, not, not just because I love it, I really do. Mm. But I travel because at that point in time, the era of Hirsi was just running away from the ball of fire. Uh, running away so much. And I get to checklist all the bucket lists while I travel and then exit this life without having to deal with that condition. Until today, I do this eerie thing that I did in 2016 when I left for that trip. I clean my room meticulously neat. My room, if I ever enter, is a mess. Mm. <laughs> it's a proper mess. But every time I travel until today, I leave it meticulously neat in case I don't come back. Okay. So then the family don't have any mess to deal with mm. and that I've left this world as clean as I can go. I just wanted to exit as clean as I can go. Did you plan to leave a note or? No. No, okay. I remember. I remember Muna didn't even know. Muna didn't even know. She sent me off. I remember. Oh. Okay. <laughs> I have this eerie photo from that trip. Uh, the day of leaving. And every time I look at that boy, I'm like, dude, this, this guy is going. Hmm. I remember having a photo with a, a, a smaller family member. Right before I left the house, she, she got to catch me in. <laughs> and yeah. And then I remember Muna sending me off and she hugged me and, and, and she felt a sense of heaviness, but she didn't understand why. Mm. I remember going to the trip, meeting my friend in London and she didn't understand the heaviness as well. Uh, but it's so eerie. And, and another thing that people don't understand as content creators is we live dual lives. We live a performative life for people yeah. and we live a life that's real, that is ourselves. So when you watch 2016 Heroes, y'all can scroll back to 2016 Heroes Instagram and see the big Europe trip I did. Mm. That kid who was performing like an influencer, oh, I'm doing this trip, I'm doing that trip. Every night after he posts, he is struggling to not do it or do it. And looking back, I, 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 I see myself like this mad clown who, who laughs and performs for people. But like, 
in his own shell of a mind, it's dark. Mm. And today, alhamdulillah, I've learned to transmute pain into comedy, not as a coping mechanism, but yeah. truly heal. Yeah. Now I take the ball of fire mm. and I hold it with love. I understand his pains. And then I say, now we laugh. And then I change it into comedy. So this ball of fire that you were carrying and you were running away from, did it develop from making content or being queer? Or is it because, I mean, we spoke a lot about being liberal. Yeah. Did that play a part as well? This ball of fire. Yeah. Because I feel like you keep saying the ball of fire, the ball of fire, but I don't understand the depth of it. And maybe it's not for you to understand. Maybe it's not for the audience to understand. Just know that it was a deep struggle of pain. Because anything I say now, you're going to understand, it implicates a lot of people. I, I, I wouldn't want to assume that my siblings don't watch this or don't mm. catch this or my future grand nieces, grand nephews don't get to catch this. And I need to be responsible for that as well. Mm -hmm. So, okay, I respect that. I can only share as much. I, I, even this feels heavy for yeah. them to even discover one day. And, and I've only started sharing a lot of it this year. But did this ball of fire turn into many artful things? Not so quickly. A friend uh, was going through a lot and he, he was going through, I mean, he wanted to choose death as, as, as the option, right? And I asked this question in the most genuine way I could. I said, now looking back, I know why it sounded very rude. I mm. said, why didn't you? But I really wanted to know. What made him choose not to? Yes, but it came up wrong and I understand why. Yeah, la. yeah. So, His English is not good. <laughs> so, my, my, my friend was telling me like, oh, he was at the edge of the building, he was thinking about it, he was thinking about it. So I said, oh, so why didn't you? In, and I felt genuine, I thought it was a genuine question because in my heart, yeah. I don't know what stopped you. Like, were you scared? Were you thinking of someone? Or did someone stop you? Like, what was it that you didn't jump? So then, now I'm going to ask you this question. Yeah. Why didn't you? The second reason. Uh, I couldn't leave and leave a deeper burden for someone else to deal with. Mm. I had a younger sibling that I had asked for this life to be responsible for. And I couldn't imagine if she had to navigate losing someone in her life like that. Yeah. And I'm not saying I'm successful at being the better version of me for this person, but I accept that I have my pains and struggles in this life that I have to experience and heal from. Uh, and so I've apologized and I've forgiven every version of Shirzi on behalf of other people, mm. whether or not they know how deep his struggle is. And so that's why. Reason number two. Reason number one was I couldn't bear to see how my body is left for the rest to, to, to bury or not. And that was solved. But the second reason was very strong. Mm. You had asked for this person to, to be within your life, you, you would want to at least see the best highlights of her life. And so I went back home, but there was also him mm. granting me an experience and it, it really was, if that story of the grandfather dying in Japan was a bell, this one was like a full blown siren at my face. I've shared this story on another interview, which I don't know when it's going to come out, but uh, because you're asking, I'll share it again. So the first trip out of London, this was how intricate my plan was. I bought a return ticket mm. from London back to Singapore as well, in case I didn't go through with it. I didn't want to be stranded. Those the worst thing you can do mm. is spend all your savings and then be stranded in Europe. Damn stress. Mm. <laughs> After that, I think you would choose to exit this life. 
broke in the cold winter. And in that trip, there was three points. Coming to London to meet my friend, Kayla. Very, very close friend. One of the four women in my life that are very important. She was going to meet me there. In the middle of the trip, we were going to go to Copenhagen for Christmas because that's where her boyfriend was at that point in time. Mm. And she was going to meet me there. And then when I leave, I leave from London. I'll meet her again. Why this three points was important is because I had thought if I didn't make it to any of these points, she would be the person to find out. Okay. And she would have to disseminate news. The first trip out of London was Norway. And one of the bucket lists that I had written, you stole all my savings, by the way, on that mm. trip, uh, <laughs> was to see the Northern Lights. Now, the stupid Singaporean boy don't know that you don't just go out and see the Northern yeah. Lights. <laughs> you have to go to a very high point uh, of the altitude on this globe. And it wasn't just like, you can't just be in, uh, what is the capital of Norway? Norway. What is the capital of Norway? I'll see you then. Denmark. No lah. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, I'm so disappointed. Anyways, uh. you, you, don't, you don't just go to the main capital, you go to Tromso. Tromso is like all the way north near the Finnish water. Okay, so I did that. I bought a trip to Tromso book for three days because the third day I had already booked the trip to Sweden. Went on this flight on the first day and he said, Would you like to book a trip for the Northern Lights expedition? Mm. I was like, What? What do you want? I asked him, Why do you need to book a trip for the Northern Lights expedition? And she said, Oh, because you don't just see it outside. You have to go up and in, into the woods. And, 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 and then if the conditions are right, you see it. I was like, oh, okay. So I just booked the trip on the last day. It was like poetic. I thought like, oh, that's the last thing I want to see in Norway. First night at the lobby, everyone was like, oh man, we didn't get to see it tonight. We didn't. Everyone was talking about it. It was a small hotel. So like, people were just murmuring, huddling up. You know, it's a small town. And I was like, what? You can book an expedition and don't see it. Which is why the clause was, if you don't get to see it on first trip, the yeah, next two funny. trips are free. Oh, okay. Not just a refund, it's free. Oh, okay. You, you get to claim it until you see it for two more trips. That's very worth it. At the point of time, I'm like, oh yeah, okay, this makes sense now. Yeah. So then, uh, second day, same thing. Everyone in the lobby, after I came back from my Airbnb experience, they were like, oh man, we don't get to see you today. We didn't get to see you today. Don't go December. December is cloudy and rainy. So the conditions need to be, the particles are very strong at the point of time. I forgot what it's called, but basically some particle in the air. Uh, there must not be precipitation. If there's clouds, you don't see it. And the sky must be clear and very, very cold. And then December, not the right time. Rains a lot. So on the first, there's a website that you can check in Tromso where they show you the weather conditions and whether you can see the northern lights at night. Mm. So the first two nights, I swear to you, this is how poetic Allah is with me. So the website said, uh, low chance. On both nights, low chance, low chance. So then I said, you know what? Tomorrow is my trip for the expedition. I'm just going to check it out. So I search. And then on that night where I was supposed to go, it said, I I, no. Allah's more poetic than that. Allah said, try today. Okay. <laughs> I remember reading it there. I rolled my eyes. I said, this is either a beautiful experience mm. or a sick joke. This is a boy who's spending his savings on a bucket list to exit. If this is a sick joke, mm. how cruel. So I took off for the night to, to the bus station. Then I met these two uh, Spanish ladies and one Colombian boy. Those three Spanish to themselves. And then like, I think, uh, after a while, they saw I was alone, so they just started talking to me and they asked me, oh, oh, this is our, this is our third night. If we don't see it, then we don't see it, we go home tomorrow. The boy said, I still follow the boy on Instagram. The boy said, oh, this is my second night. If I don't see it, uh, I go home tomorrow too, so I don't get to claim the third one. And so they turned to me and they asked, oh, how many nights is it for you? Yeah. And I said, it's my first night. Oh, now don't worry, I had the weeks clearing up, the, the clouds clearing up. So if... Actually, they had a Spanish accent. I don't know why they're American in my voice now. And, and so you get to see it. I'm sure you get to see it. And, and they asked, where do you go home? I said, tomorrow. And they're like, oh, okay. I remember one of the girls said, don't worry, I think you're a lucky charm. I was like, another sick joke to tell a boy who's about to exit. Mm. Bought the bus. And I remember closing my eyes and I kept this to myself. I didn't even share. I believe in the power of jinx. I believe if you want to do something, don't announce it online because uh, people can bet ill intend you and then mm. it doesn't come true. So I kept it to myself. 
kept to myself, held my heart. And then we get the expedition guy. His walkie went off. Spoke Norwegian. I didn't understand what he was saying. And then, uh, Oslo! Capital of Norway is Oslo! Mm -hmm. And so then uh, he, he said, ladies and gentlemen, there's been a sighting of the Northern Lights. I was like, okay, try it today. So then the bus parked at this reservoir. I remember it was so vivid. I still have a photo of it. The reservoir was vast, okay? Mm. Like 500 times the size of uh, Bedok Reservoir. Oh, <laughs> ironic Bedok Reservoir. Uh, and and in, the, in the sky, there was a parting of the clouds and the middle was clear as hell. And then you see this brush stroke of white. It's like, you know when you have dry acrylic paint and you brush it on the canvas dry? It's just like so dry. It looks like cl a cloud. And he says, did you see that stroke of white in the sky? And then I was like, yeah. And then that, ladies and gentlemen, is the Northern Lights. Wait, I was so confused. Oh, you have to use the camera. I read about that. I read about it. So you'll see white, but it only appears pink or green on camera. This boy, Singaporean boy, was like, see me scam is this? Mm. He says, but it's true. When I stick it on your on DSLR, you will immediately see it reflects green and pink. Uh, if it's very strong pink, if not, just light and faint green. I'm like, okay. So if you all can line up, and so I'm lining up. Everywhere this guy went, this everywhere he went, I was literally the, <laughs> the first person behind because I throw him everywhere he went. Mm. Just in case the lights moved. So then, true enough, when he flipped it, I saw it was like a highlighter. You know, you took you, you take a, a highlighter and then you just stroke on a picture. It looked like that. Mm. I was like, huh? This one you cannot lie, la. <laughs> you know? It's on the DSR. So I sat down and I just said, ah, okay. Look at this. I saw the northern lights. Okay. How beautiful was it? It was like a cloud. Okay. This like point, even when it was dancing? It wasn't dancing. It was just still. The particles wasn't strong. It's just okay. ha, like that. So then, okay. the walkie went off again. And he says, uh, Ladies and gentlemen, I, I, I know we're ending our expedition soon, but apparently there's a heavier activity in the northern border next to Finland. So we have to go up to the Laplands a little bit. It's like 45 minutes. Are you guys okay? We were like, sure, of course. Yeah. <laughs> like if we can see more. So then we bought up the bus, took off, arrived at the spot and this time we stepped off the bus now that white stroke this time it was moving it was like sonic it was fast it was like whoosh, 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 whoosh. I was like oh my god he cannot bluff this one yeah. this one he cannot bluff eh? <laughs> this is this I see it I see it, I see it bro <laughs> it was moving so quick and so we took a picture and it was even stronger the green I was like wow we saw it we saw it mm. wow I was just sitting down I was just admiring this beauty of Allah Wow, this is amazing. This is really amazing. And then uh, there's a point where it got too cold, and so we got a cup of cocoa from the from the bus. And then we, I, I got up to sit the bus. It was too cold. Mm. I remember warming my heart with a cup of cocoa. I closed my eyes and I said, "Wow, oh, thank you, thank you, Allah." I said, "I got to see it." And next thing I know, I hear screaming from the bottom of the bus. So I look down to see what's happening. Everyone's staring to the sky, screaming. Ah! Ah! I was like, "What is going on?" I looked up. Bro, it was pink and green without the DSLR. Without with my bare eyes, and it was just moving, bro. It was moving so hard, and I was like, "Oh my god!" I screamed to the rest of the bus, "Oh my god, it's pink and green! It's pink and green!" We all ran down the bus, and I stood there watching it for twenty minutes. Twenty minutes this shit performed. I remember screaming, "God I've watched Beyonce's performance. Mm. Okay? It's yeah, it's amazing. It's not you're trying to say it's not as amazing. And nothing like this. 20 minutes of Allah's lights just showing and displaying for you. Yeah. And I'm a I am do not know what possessed me to say, dance for me. Dance for me. It was like a command. Mm. It was almost like selfish. Like for once in my life, I had something that did a performance for me. It was a selfish desire. Dance for me. And then I remember it was done. It was so euphoric. I remember it was like laughing, tearing. It was just this euphoria of, of emotion. I was in the bus and I, I held the cocoa again. I said, oh God, thank you. Once again, Allah. Like, you showed me even more. Mm. And then I stopped and I said, you must be trying to tell me something. You must be like, is this you trying to tell me something? apart from trying today. 
And I remember just receiving, like, it's not even like a message or a voice. It's just like receiving a wisdom. Mm. And it was like, when you think you've seen it all, you can see more. Mm. And the message I got from that was, even on your deathbed, on your death day, that you don't choose, but I choose, you won't get to see everything. So why stop yourself? I showed you a faint white stroke in the sky and you were going to settle for it. I showed you it moving fast mm. and you were going to settle for it. I can show you, can more. Show you more. Yeah. You can see more. So why stop us? I remember just receiving this wisdom and I just like, and I, I just, I just turned my head away towards the, the window because I didn't want to see anyone. I didn't want people to see me crying. And I was like, if any time you wanted to send me a wisdom mm. that was on point, try today and then that. And this was the beginning of it. The rest of my trip, as depression is, it was back and forth. It's, it's not like, ah, oh, I'm healed <laughs> and I enjoyed the trip. It was back and forth. I eventually got to the point where I was on that on the last day in London crying and a barista gave me a cookie because he thought I was stupid. Mm. I, don't know, but the, yeah. I mean, I feel like that message could have went both ways. What did you think the other message was? Oh my God, maybe it's the other message. What is yeah, that? Nah, is it like, okay, now, <laughs> now I feel like it's not rude to talk about it now because it's, it's okay. years ago. I hope I'm not being rude. It's a safe space. But it could have been, hey, this is your last day. True. Here. True. Enjoy this show before you go. Honestly, if I were you and I was that sad, I would have thought that. I don't know how to describe to you this downloads of wisdom that I know is not a voice from me. Mm. There is no way in that point I'm able to tell myself that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm not saying that I have this excess call, but all I know is God takes care of people uh, when they need it. And if you're ever going through anything, this is why Islam is still so intrinsic in my life no matter how liberal or modern or, or different I am from the rest mm. this is why Islam is so valuable to me and I'm not saying Islam is a real religion to offend other people uh, yeah. but God in your heart is such a beautiful way to live these days I say I hold my inner child on my left hand and walk with him every day mm. to heal him and take care of him and on the right I trust God guiding me uh, and that's my principle in life now. But that's another timeline altogether. La. That's the yeah. post-pandemic timeline. Remember 2016, 2017, because like, I left that trip 2017. 2017 to 2020, Hughesy, was obnoxious, angry Hughesy. Yeah. The internet saw obnoxious, mm. but what they didn't know was she was trying to make sense of choosing life. Yeah. Which, what we wanted to talk about was I met you know, 2016. I met her fully for the first time during 2016. So was this? This was before the trip. This was, oh my god! So I met you at the crux of it, uh. You met me when I hated my life. Where I was debating with my four friends why I should go. You were one of the problems. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. For no. Yeah. When I first met you, our relationship wasn't the best. I hated his guts. And I'm pretty sure he hated mine. I did. Okay, so let me give the audience some context, <laughs> right? We were doing after hours, John left the company and then he needed someone to take over his, his, uh... Studio. Yeah, his studio, basically. And this studio, uh, were the ones that were producing after hours and also Yang KK show at that point in time. If you guys remember, it was called Bay of All Trades. So, at that point of time, Muna and Hersey also split already. Yeah, it was the last year. Yeah, it was the last year of Muna and Hersey. So then our boss was like, Hey, Hersey, are you, if you are not planning to do anything, here's a job for you. I said yes. Yeah, Hersey said yes. And he was the one who produced uh, After Hours for, I think, 10 episodes. Was it 10? I th I th it was season 2. It was season 2. Yeah. I remember I tried to do a lot. Of, yeah. of 10 episodes. Hey, okay, wait. Let me, let me say this first. At that point of time, we were both very childish people. Same. Right? And at that point of time, it was my first ever YouTube show. It was my first ever 
time also be involved in a production. So I don't know what how production works. I don't know what being a host is. I don't know what being a, a producer is. I do not know anything about YouTube apart from sitting on the couch and talking rubbish. Right? After I was went on season one, Hersey did season two. So when Hersey did season two, of course, there were a lot of difference between season one and two. And now that I'm older, <laughs> I realize you're producing your own show. Yes, I, and now that I'm older, I'm producing my own show, and that I, I am more aware of what producing actually means. It's like you are producing something, or rather, the producer will want to give birth to their work, Same. and that was Hilzi's work. That is why we hired Hilzi, but I didn't understand that in my head. You were just supposed to take over John's job. Don't change it. Just take over it, manage the crew, manage the three cameramen, manage the sound, design the set, whatever. Don't change how the show looks. Same, same. But the show changed, right? It, it became more dramatic. It became crazy. Yeah, with the curtains, I, okay, we, I think we took everything down, but we invited guests, we had Ben came, we had Dikosh, they came out of curtains. Nice. We even had Ridwa Azman, in which I had a beef with him at that point of time. And, and we squashed the, the beef on the show. How successful is Hirzi in healing people, guys? Guys, it was now in retrospect, in hindsight, it, it was, was a, a great, good show. Yeah, it was a good Thank show. You. It was it was very well thought about, but I didn't understand it. So all I did was when the episode came out every day, I just texted him, hey, can you can you change this? Hey, can you change that? Hey, can you change this? Hmm. And I thought I was just being a very good colleague, giving my opinion on what, how the show looks like. But what I didn't realize was that I was offending his work. Can we squash this beef also? I feel yeah. like, I feel like, oh, is there anything else you want to add? No. Okay. I feel like the last five minutes of your spiel was just you blaming yourself. Mm. And I'd like to take accountability for the other half mm. as well. You got to remember now knowing context what Hirzi was going through yeah, and that was one of the things he was trying to make sense of his life mm. I wasn't even earning much with that role all I know was it was occupying my time from thinking thoughts and those times that I could think thoughts I hope it was joyful uh, and it's in no way your fault that you need to take on the load because it wasn't just your voice it was yeah. echoed by the rest of the cast as well and I just was at that tipping point of not having it. Y'all could have given me very sensible insight. Even though now you think, oh, that was a good show. That was a good concept. Mm -hmm. But it was my fault. Not my fault. It was that Hirzi's timeline to have received that rage the way he did. Long story short, I raged out on the cast and then I left, I left the job also, mm -hmm. like about a few weeks after that. Uh, it, wasn't, it wasn't cohesive for my state of mind at the point of time. But it was in no way a judge of your character. And what I like about spirituality now is that it taught me this concept of seasons. Mm. Different people vibrate differently in different seasons. And at the point of time, we were supposed to be aggressively vibrating against each other. But now on a different timeline, we are more in sync mm. and our friendship becomes even more meaningful. There's nothing more beautiful than a friendship that started out hating each other and yeah. now just jog on the same pace all the time like. and maybe when we were fighting I manifested that I hope one day <laughs> one day what? one day maybe he will respect me I still don't <laughs> <laughs> no I, I I realized that because uh, I I think about last year or two years ago I read this quote where everything you're living now is manifested by you mm. like, uh, uh, many years ago and when I'm living my life now. I'm, I realize like, yes. Yeah. You know, I, I really did manifest all of this. So to everyone out there who is, who are like, especially famous people who are beefing with other people, just ask yourself, what if in five years, we squash this and become the best of friends? Uh, but at the same time, acknowledge that the beef needs to happen. Everything in life needed to happen at the timeline it did. If we didn't have that moment, yeah. I don't think our friendship is vibrating on this level still. It's more meaningful than it did. Do you yeah. know? And this is almost a decade ago. Oh my god, this almost is nine years ago. Yeah. That's mad. Which means it's almost been a decade since I'm Eight on YouTube. Years, la, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Sucks, yeah. 
no, 20, 24. This is 2015, right? No, 2016, sorry, sorry, I counted yeah. Eight years. So it's two more years and then it will be a decade of me on YouTube. Wow, that's very fast. That's why Muna Hirzi left so quick. It was always yeah. 10 years. Everyone's like, why oh, so quick? It's a no, it's been 10 years. Move yeah. to make success quicker. And okay, how, what do you think our relationship is like now? I have zero respect for you. If anything, <laughs> uh, I can't stand you. I like uh, that you've lost me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think, I think seeing your journey, mm. not seeing, observing your journey uh, from it, it, it beyond just the whole personal like career things, mm. your, your weight loss journey. I'm proud of the ambition of this boy. Mm. I'm, I, and it, we, we could have grown up, grown up two different worlds, you yeah. know, you and yours, mine and mine. But this ambition is something I say, that's where our Venn diagram meets in the middle. Uh, to make something of this life, lucky for you, you, oh, that's not true. I know stories about you. I was going to say, lucky for you, you never had to choose to consider to exit mm. your life. But um, I'm happy to witness you at this timeline now mm. and then trying new things. You know what? what I enjoy the most about our friendship and it's going to sound obnoxious from me is I enjoy inspiring you. And it's not from the things I do, but it's from the things I see you are able to do and you haven't seen yet. Mm. Well, and that's like, true. That I, I, I agree. Yeah. Even yeah. In, in things like, like you're doing stand-up now mm. and I saw it. I saw it when you were writing a wedding speech, right? And... I remember just egging you and just just go and do it and try. And I see you doing it. It's something about... It's like I'm talking to eight-year-old you and telling him, no, you can do it. Mm. And there's something so meaningful to me when I get to talk to people's inner child and see them as adults mm. doing the work for it. It's, it's what gives me purpose. Yeah. No, and I appreciate that. I feel like our friendship is, now that we are mature... Now it's like he's almost been a decade. I feel like we mature and we respect each other's work. Same. Yeah. So and I feel like I know what you're good at, you know what I'm good at. So and I feel like we don't cross Why that. Are you good? <laughs> <laughs> no, I feel like I I'm very grateful for this uh friendship. And I, ne- I don't think I said this online before. Oh. Just saying KL was Hersey's idea. Yeah, having. Yeah. Because I was, I was uh, at that part of time where I wanted to close down just saying. Because I was very tired of doing it. I think I was having this chat with you. I'm like, views are going down. I think we've reached our max season. potential. Yeah. Like our, our send off season already. And I'm going to end it. And then, here's he said, why not just do a KL version? And I'm like, oh, hmm. that's a great idea. I've like, I won't lie that I thought of it, but I never got to it. And I feel like I didn't have the, the courage to do it. Because I feel like in Singapore, it's easier for people to, to give me respect because they've seen the work. But in Malaysia, I feel like it's a bit hard. You I know? said this to Ming, Ming Yu uh, about him trying stand up and mm. now he's taking off with that. I said, what don't happen in this scene enough is encouragement. Mm. I think most times people see each other as competition uh, if it's not shared in the same lane. And I think it's so important to just encourage people because you don't know what collaborations can happen, number one. And you don't know just how beautiful a trajectory of a person can be if you take off. And yes, you shouldn't claim that person's success after that, but you should be able to say like, wow, I'm so proud of his fucking journey. Yeah. Yeah, and and I think that's one one of the many things that I'm grateful for for our friendship. And number two is stand-up comedy. (laughs) <laughs> I enjoy it I really enjoy it and I must say it's very hard to write and now I feel like we are in the in, the, in our second working stage yeah because first, first was 2016 and now it's the a, it's a second one we've worked on many different points yeah. since the pandemic because our, our, our friendship renewed after the pandemic mm. uh, we've done some producing together We've done some other fun projects together, but I feel like the difference with this is I get to workshop with you. And that's fun. I think workshopping, so comedy, you can have a formula, you can have a pattern, you can have a teaching 
a manuscript for someone, yeah. but his stone and his DNA will be his and you cannot mm. force. You can just say, okay, try this workflow and see what, what, uh, what charts for you. Mm. And I think it's so exciting to be able to, to share that with you and then workshop things with you. Yeah. It's so fun to see the abyss of your creativity from how offensive you can go <laughs> when I have to reel you back and say, nah, to, to you know, fending you, it down. You finding it. And like what I like about your stuff now is what I like about you is you, you're willing to learn, bro. Mm. There is no arrogance in you learning something. Like you would show up to me your first vomit draft and I'd be like, <laughs> and I know sometimes I try to hide my face and you can tell, but I'm like, I, I hide my face not because it's cringe or anything, but I'm like, I do not want to discourage you yeah. uh, from your set. But there are just some things that it could workshop and I'm kindly telling you mm. where it can go. And sometimes in the moment, like, is he listening or not? <laughs> because it's you. So I'm like, is he you know listening what? not? And then next time you come back <laughs> and you nail it, I'm like, you've got it, you've got a set, you've got yeah. a set. No, the reason, okay, okay, okay. So I am <laughs> someone who didn't finish school and I think everybody knew that. So how I learn things is very, very different. I learn a lot through people. And like, I would like to think or I would like to say that most of my skills that I hold now is all learned by mainly one person in my life. And that person is Alter Lim. She taught me so many things in life, so many traits in life. I even laugh. Alter Lim had been my mentor for a very long time. For a very, very long time. Man. And of course, like, Is that why you have this haircut now? <laughs> and Alter Lim also, like, I, I feel like, made me reach my full circle moment. Like, I was once an employee for a very long time, for almost close to a decade of my life. I was an employee. And then now we are business partners. So it's like, okay, full circle moment, right? And I learned a lot, a lot, a lot of things for Alter Lim. And my many other bosses also. So I pick up different, different things. But I feel like in terms of creativity and being a talent, no one ever taught me that until stand-up comedy came along and you had to teach me. So can you imagine that I'm processing so much information that is so new to me? Right, right, right. And I like... In a short span too. Yes, yes. So and how you explain things is very different on how I absorb things, right? So I would like to think I'm a very, very structured person. Like if something goes out of structure, I'm very uncomfortable. So, when you try to explain stand-up comedy to me and how you should write things, I was like, where the fuck is the structure? Because right. I don't get it. Until you said one thing, okay, do you, you said this. Okay, do you say a sentence? I say a sentence. I say a sentence and then you say, make it funny. So, okay. Fun exercise, right? Yeah. So I'm like, okay, that is the structure. Shall, like, we, shall we tell them what is this exercise? Oh. So basically, you have a line. Yeah. So I would say, I'll say any line. And then you gotta, you got to make it funny. Mm. Okay. Please remember, this is the internet. So reel yourself back in from the offenses. Who's wearing a black outfit? Make it funny. <laughs> <laughs> Are we playing it now? Yes. Ah. Uh, who died? Yeah, yes. <laughs> Very good. Very good. Yeah, so that was the exercise and we were playing it. It's, we were, we were, he, he taught me this exercise on the way to an event. Yeah. And, and that's how I understood. I'm like, oh, fuck. I now finally understand what the fuck you were saying for the past week. <laughs> Some people take slower. Uh, I want to ask yeah. you. Yeah. Now that you've tried it, now that you've dabbled it, you know, and I'm sure you can see like, oh, there's more that I can experience with this uh, part of my career. Where do you see yourself going with this new found interest in your basket? Okay, so there are two sides of me, right? I feel like one side of me is... Was oh, fat. Yes. One side of me wants to make a lot of money. The other side of me wants to explore what kind of talent I have. And through my years of YouTube, I feel like I've been doing the same thing. Same thing, same thing that I never really explored. So now that I found out that I can be funny with structure and that I can do stand-up. It interests me. But I know, and I'm not going to discount all the stand-up comedians in Singapore or in the world of how much work they put in to make big bucks. Mm. But at the same time, it's, okay, at the same time, I want to try, but at the same time, I don't. Because okay, I, I feel like I don't have a lot of time. Uh -huh. Knowing what I'm good at already, which is this. 
I think yeah. that just means that you have 365 days in a year. Mm. You have 500 different passions, mm. a specific set of income to hit every month to pay for your lifestyle. Yeah. Uh, and just chart your life because people think of life like, okay, uh, I have seven days in a week. People don't realize you have 365 days in a year. Mm. And so your ambitions can come in and out. Uh, and your passion doesn't have to be a career, but your career doesn't also have to be a work. Yeah. There will be some people who get to do all three Venn diagrams in the middle. Alhamdulillah, I've been able to do that. But um, yeah, just prioritize. Don't let go of this Uh, newfound interest is what I'm saying. I think you're good at it. Yeah, no, I say I I am not gonna let it go. But for now, for now, I'm just gonna make use of you and just do stand up whenever you do it. He does, you know. Fuck a leverage. <laughs> the highest paid open micer. Okay, I <laughs> I'm like, do you pace me every time I produce? Just saying. So I cannot, you know, be rude and not do the same justice. <laughs> so I pay him a decent amount. And every time okay, like you got your money's worth the second time I performed. <laughs> I was like, Alhamdulillah, it's funnier now. Yes, it's funnier now. Can I refund the first show? It will be, it will be funnier. It will be funnier. But I realized that I'm only funny when I make fun of people, and I want to change that. <laughs> I, th- I am built this way. No lah, you're not built this way. No, you no, just no. haven't explored different facets of you. Yes, no, but I think that you think you're just a bully. Ah, uh. careful, yeah. no. Yeah, you yeah. know what happens to bully. I don't know, but I can call Nicole Chu and ask. <laughs> See, make it funny. Make it funny. Make it funny. I'll give it to you. No, I can laugh at things because mm. uh, I've healed it uh, for myself. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> I, can, I can laugh at being laughed at is what I'm saying. But okay, I think we can end it here. Even though we didn't cover a lot of things that I wrote about, but I, and I guess... That's why I, I would like to do this extension of the show because I feel like whenever me, Muna, and Jay and Jackie are on the couch, it's more, it's both work and a conversation, and we are on a topic, right? Yeah. And I feel like I'm missing the portion where I have real conversations like this. I see. Yeah. 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 It, I think I think it's a good format number one, but I also think it's nice to see to to create a space intimate enough for people to feel safe to tell you. Chapters of their life that has never been before shared. You know, I think like sometimes when there is a group or hyper lights, mm. people put on that performance, and I hope whoever else sits here gets to feel as vulnerable and safe enough to share that bit. Uh, and I'm so glad that you're starting this thing. I remember last, like the last few weeks, just pushing this with like, "Do you know you should do this shit?" Yeah, already. and this has been okay. No, I'm not saying that this has been my dream. But one of the person that inspired this was also Sandra, because when she got Coldplay, that she got to open for Coldplay, we invited her to talk about it, and then she, and then when she told me her experience, I thought about it. What is a level of success for me, mm. right? Because for her, now that she has opened for Coldplay, she don't mind not doing music anymore. She has reached the pinnacle in her head, lah. Hey, don't say that, Sandra. I think that's a trajectory for you. Yeah. So. We will be also said there, but she says, you know, music is just one thing that I wanted that's to fair. explore, and I've explored it, and I've reached the pinnacle of it in my in that's her fair. thoughts. Yeah, that's fair. And she has other forms of creativity that she would still like to explore, that's so she's going to do that. So then, when she shoot me back the question, I'm like, you know what? Actually, I like watching David Letterman, and maybe in my head that would be. And something. all you got was two couches and a dumbass. <laughs> yes. <laughs> If you watch David Letterman, he has almost the same <laughs> setup, but he's was a leather chair because he's richer and he has bigger guests. Yeah, so I think what what it it it, it might feel like an abrupt ending for the people watching, but I was telling you this about my stand up comedy is that whatever you're experiencing now is going to be ingredients and materials for you five years later to heal from and make material. So whatever we talked about today. With things that we've healed from and can can you know look back and 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 yeah. hash out again, and whatever we're currently going through five years now is another decade that we'll sit again. I think the reason why I only started sharing it this year is because I healed. Mm. And and if there's any lesson to take away from is that number two, mm. redemption can happen. Mm. Mm-hmm. And number one, when you try today. Healing is possible, 
And then, and then you get to figure out how does, how does my version of Husey transmuting pain to comedy look like? And then you'll figure it out for you. Not because not everyone's as funny as me. And on that note, thank you for coming on this episode of Just Saying He Hasn't Named It Yet. So we've come to the end of this episode. Thank you so much, Hersey, for coming and sharing the most beautiful yet some of the most painful um, seasons of your life. I really appreciate you coming here and sharing this story. This is, again, this is an extension of Just Saying. I haven't decided on what to name it yet. But for now, I guess we can call it Just Saying Solo. If you guys have anything you'd like us to talk about or if you have any guests you would like me to invite, let me know in the comment section below. If not, I'll see you guys in the next episode. Dip, 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 that's the wrong thing. Samba, ma, chikau, kering. Lontong, lemang, lepan, bang. Ketupat, achi, charun,